say power to the pivot. Power to the pivot. To the pivot. Yay. Okay. Power to the pivot. Say it again. Ready? Ready? Jump. Power to the pivot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, so hey everyone, um, this is Brandon back over here again. Got my son, so just playing around. Um, but let's talk about something really big today. Um, power view, that is, right? No and power. what's happened, guys, is that this self-service BI thing is just taken off, all right? And if you want to learn power view and you want to learn what it is, that's the purpose of this video. So I'm back in whatever else. Now, I'm an old school BI architect, believe it or not. No one ever believes that, but I told you. Um, have implemented many, many projects for many, many companies. And it took years to develop that knowledge. And I think that in a way that sort of hurt me because at one point I became very biased against end users really turning around and retrieving their own data. Because you see, I was taught things, fundamental lessons like data cleansing or watching for things like leakage and whatever else. And true, those things do require time and effort to master. But what I missed the boat on, and like many other experienced BI people, was this new concept of self-service BI, the idea that, you know what, the majority of data doesn't need those sort of cycles to be able to analyze it. And this is what many companies realized, and when they did, it took off. Um, PowerView is Microsoft's implementation of self-service BI. Whenever you think of self-service, think of PowerView as one. So the purpose of this tutorial, guys, is to go ahead and show you PowerView in action, to go ahead and see it and to really be able to see the scripts. Now, this is my emergency tutorial, so I'm doing this a little bit earlier than finishing up the SSRS Report Builder um, series, just because this is one of those 2012 things that is new, here, and now. So guys, let's get started. Let's see what this power view is and why it's such a big deal. Um, it is single-handedly put Microsoft on the map as a self-service BI player, and we'll see why now. Hope you guys love it again. Should have fun. Hayden, say bye. Okay, he says bye, he's with his toys. All right, see you guys. <laughs> see you soon. Look, look forward to this. Woo, so here we go. All right, so guys, this is PowerView now, right? And this is really nice. And if you've been following any of my tutorials so far, you know that I'm a big stickler for a couple of things. Number one, I want you to be able to do every single lab on your own also, because trust me, learning is doing, not just watching, not when it comes to this sort of stuff. So what I've done um, is once again, I've chosen one of the tutorials with Microsoft over here, slightly altered though, I'll alter just a few steps, but I'll be very clear on those steps so everyone can know it. Um, this is the power, the sample PowerView report that Microsoft has. Excellent tutorial on how to use PowerView, definitely. I like it a lot. I'll talk about, um, I'll define various things within this report so that you can understand them. I'll also talk about um, things that you don't want to do that you might see in the report, but are still very good, good tools for being able to learn how the report works. So standard report sample report and power view um, you can download samples and what you want to do is you're going to want to download the samples from microsoft over here called the hello world picnic samples so you can download those right off the bat just google them and you'll get them over there so remember your steps are over here to go back afterwards right over, um, as you guys can tell right over here in this link so that's going to be our first helpful part okay now understanding what power view is and what it isn't right now because it's things are changing so when do you use power view and when do you don't when do you don't that's not even a good term but oh well <laughs> all right here we go power view this was meant for self-service bi What self-service BI means is that we want users to be able to get data on demand. Second thing you have to understand over here too is it requires a model at this moment. Model is a fancy word for some oh, representation of data. Sometimes a model can be, for example, a single table. Sometimes it can be multiple tables that are connected together. It depends, but some representation of tables. Now, you should understand something right off the bat, too. Um, whenever I say model and things like that, you know, it's probably one of the biggest things that typically intimidates people in classrooms and things like that, right? Especially if they're brand new. Now, if they're not brand new, no. But if people who are brand new that come from business backgrounds or whatever else, when I say, okay, now you need to be able to make a model or something, suddenly people get real scared. But let me tell you, it's not that difficult. By the end of class, I can usually see people running with it, flowing with it, and loving it. 
So don't get scared of a term like this or whatever else, because trust me, I have taught many people, many, many people who walked in there scared as they can be and left pretty happy. So model very important over there. Why? Because you see, the real idea behind this is this. If you do it right, someone can do the equivalent of producing, let's say, hundreds of reports on demand without any code. Yes, that's true. That's the dynamic ability. Right there's the money shot that I want you guys to see. Someone could turn around off each model usually and produce hundreds of reports without any code if done correctly. That's the power right there. And as opposed to SSRS where you have to have a person, you know, um, inside the standard reports we're doing where someone has to come in and actually create a report at the beginning and, you know, someone has to make a static report. This is all about dynamic reports. So someone does not have to pre-create the report on demand. Um, what I'm trying to say is, as you guys will see inside this demo, someone can come in and they can actually produce any sort of report on the, on the fly rather than having to go ahead and actually create a report in the background, a traditional static report. Now, both reports have advantages and disadvantages. You guys will see over here, this does not replace Report Builder or Visual Student or, or SQL Server Designer, um, SQL Server Data Tools or Business Intelligence Development Studio, whatever you want to, um, whichever version of SQL you're using. It doesn't replace that. Um, for static reports, that means reports that needed to be pre-designed, like we check the daily this, 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 this. This is still going to be most appropriate. But for exploratory reporting or exploratory data needs, Power View is going to rule. Let's see this new tool and see it because it kind of really does encapsulate what BI means today and you name it. So very, very helpful. Okay, so we've come down and we've got that. Okay. Now, I'm going to add a couple of extra things in here just so everyone can see it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use SharePoint 2013, but you could use SharePoint 2010 with this. I'm also going to use Excel twenty thirteen, but the tutorial was written for twenty ten. And if you wanted to, you can use Power View without SharePoint. They just chose to do it over here in this example to demonstrate it with SharePoint, so that's the reason. So, so without SharePoint. So those of you who might just have a copy of, say, SQL, maybe you download a, a version of SQL or something like that, and you've got Excel, you could also do it that way too. Um, but here I'm going to do it, though, with SharePoint just for, these, just for this example. And if you don't have SharePoint, consider signing up for a... For a, for a trial cloud subscription or try out one of Microsoft's free virtual apps. Sometimes, though, those may not actually have the files that you need, but um, that could help. May not work, though, because, like I said, you can't add things usually to the virtual apps, but as the trial... But the free, um, the free trial cloud subscription definitely does work, so just take a look at that. Or just do the tutorials without SharePoint. That's easy. <laughs> okay, so you guys got it now. SharePoint 2010 or SharePoint 2013. Excel 2010 or SharePoint, or, or I'm sorry, Excel 2013. And then we also, and, and then you also can see the link right over here. So just search that or whatever else. Search for the, um, search for the PowerView sample report, and that's going to be the link that we're going to be basing most of this on. Now remember, there are a lot of important things I'm going to tell you that you're going to need to see that are not included within that tutorial. Um, the, um, so please keep that in mind because there's things I need to, I need to definitely explain so that we don't make certain mistakes as we begin to use self-service BI because it's powerful. But, like anything else, it can be misused. All right. 
So got all that down over there. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prep this at the very beginning to show everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and prep my SharePoint 2013 for this particular um, tutorial. So let me go ahead and do that just to demonstrate, and I wait it for everyone here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come up to my home page over here. Now I've got SharePoint working. If you guys remember in earlier tutorials, I did not have SharePoint completely working. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and add an app. Client, little client side running type version right now that we've got on things which makes our SharePoint um, which makes our SharePoint programming much more aka extensible so we can integrate it much easier with other apps and other types of you know platforms and I'm gonna come down over here and I'm gonna click on just standard document library now I could have used a number of libraries actually but standard document library and it wanted us to give it a name I'm gonna give it a name over here of Power View demonstration. So that's a that's a little that's a little bit different. It's a slight lab difference over there. They named it Hello World, you name it, but I'm gonna call it Power View demonstration. So just keep that in mind. That's a slight difference Brandon's making, right there. Okay. Now once I have Power View demonstration, oh, that was too long. Look at that hit that in over there, but oh well. Once I've got Power Power View demonstration over here. What I'm going to do next is I need to prep it to be able to take in, um, to be able to run SQL Server reporting data. So I'm going to click on Power View Demonstration. And if your SharePoint's installed right, this step's going to work, by the way, for you. And if you're in SharePoint 2010, you're going to go about this a little similar, but a little bit different. Um, what you're going to do is come over to your document library, come up and click on Library, and this step's the same in 2010. Then come down over here and click on Library Settings. right over there. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to be able to add content types, right? Content types add certain types of functionality um, to our actual to our actual applications or to our actual libraries. So what you do, and this is the same in SharePoint 2010, is you click on Advanced Settings, Allow Management of Content Types, of course, yes. Come down over here and click OK. Okay, excellent. Now, once you actually get that clicked on, come down, 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 and you're going to see these content types right over here. All right, for content types, what you want to do is click on Add from Existing, <clears throat> um, Add from Existing Site Content Types. So you're going to give it some new functionality. Okay. Now, under All Groups, when you click the down arrow, and this is still the same whether we're in um, SharePoint 2010 or SharePoint 2013. Choose SQL Server Reporting Services Content Types. Okay. Now, if you don't see a SQL Server Reporting Services Content Types, check the MSDN documentation on how to properly add SQL Server, um, SQL Server Reporting Services to your actual site by first integrating it within the site collection and then integrating it within the site itself. And that's there in the documentation. I won't cover that here because it's out of our scope. So now I'll come back over there and just add them. The one we really need is report builder, report data source, but I'm just adding them all over here. And then turn around and click OK. Ah, there we go. Now we've actually got the ability to be able to add PowerView sites. So I'm going to click on PowerView demonstration and double check to make sure this is working by coming up and clicking on, by coming up over here, and I'm going to click on Files. And when I go down to New Document, Notice over here all these report builder type things, including report data source. So report builder model, report builder report, which we've been working in extensively. And then bam, there's report data source, which we're going to be needing. Okay, before we do that, though, we need to prep this project to actually work and make some and do some steps. Otherwise, we get some funny caching issues and things like that. So first thing I'm going to do is if you're running SharePoint 2013, you'll need to do this with me. Um, first, you need to find the Microsoft samples right over there. So these are the Hello Picnic samples right over there. You guys can see them. Um, you can download those right off of Microsoft for free. Just Google Hello Picnic Samples or, 